This video will show how to cast objects in deep pore epoxy in one pore with no bubbles. First thing to do is build a form. I use fast curing glue to attach acrylic sheets to a piece of plywood. It's important to make sure the entire edge is evenly covered to help seal the form. Caulk the inside and outside of all the seams to make sure there's no accidental leaks. Once the caulking is completely dry, I pour a base of self-leveling tabletop epoxy at one quarter inch deep in the bottom of the form. I'll separate it into two colors for these pores. For this one, I'm gonna use a fire engine red pigment powder and a black dye and mix them together. Once the base is cured, you can mix the deep pour epoxy. Pour into the mixing container as low and slow as possible. Use a ramp like this clean paint stir stick to keep any extra air from being introduced while pouring. Any deep pour epoxy will work. To speed up the process, you could use a degassing chamber it would guarantee no bubbles without the need to go slow. But for this video, stir the epoxy slow. Since no pigment will be added for clear bubble-free results, you wanna stir manually and slow. Epoxy takes three days to cure, so I have no problem stirring the epoxy for 20 minutes or more. Here you can see as you stir slowly, the epoxy doesn't agitate adding any air. Stir until it's completely clear as it is here. Using a propane torch, remove any air that was produced right in the container prior to pouring. The less air added during the pour, the better. Finally, it's time to do the deep pour. This pour is done in a single pour, again using a clean paint stick as a ramp and allowing the epoxy to cascade down the object. This is done so minimal air will be introduced. Pour as slowly as you can. Pour it at least an inch deeper than you're gonna need in the end. Once poured, the epoxy will generate a lot of heat from the exothermic reaction, especially pouring so deep. You want to extend cure times as much as possible to allow time for the air to release. I put my form in a plastic bag and surround the bag with small amounts of ice in a cooler. Be sure not to cover the top to allow the chemical to vent. After a few days when the epoxy is fully cured, carefully pry off the acrylic plastic form. Using either a planer, miter, or table saw, square up all the sides and clean up any edges. If like me you're using a miter saw, make several cuts per side moving the blade across the cut to try to keep from heating the epoxy. The epoxy will now be cloudy with blade marks, so start sanding. I begin with 150 grit and sand until smooth. You can then router the edges with any profile you like. The epoxy will router the same as wood. Once the edges are all finished, I sand at 220 and 320 grit sandpaper until it's completely smooth. Finally, I polish using 400 to 4000 grit soft pads. You can see how much it clears up just using these pads alone. Once it looks fairly clear, the next step is to rinse any remaining dust off the epoxy and then allow it to dry. At this point, you can either polish the epoxy using car buffer and wax or do a flood coat like I'm doing using a tabletop epoxy. I prefer the flood coat over polishing because it can't wear off, but more importantly, it is much harder once cured than the deep pour epoxy, making it more resistant to scratching and UV damage. Evenly coat it and allow it to run off, finishing it with a torch to remove any air bubbles. And there you have it. Allow the flood coat to cure and you will have a crystal clear casting that will preserve your object for a very long time. Hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments section and please don't forget to subscribe.